What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be giving you my guide to Sunset Canyon in Rise of Kingdoms. Now real quick, I saw a really funny comment on one of my videos that said something like, hey Omniarch, I love the video, but do you only have one white t-shirt? And I do buy them in packs of 12. I buy them in bulk and i though that's the shirt that i wear when i'm just like chilling at home i have nowhere to go nothing to do and that's also when i record my youtube video so it just so happens that i'm often wearing a white v-neck t-shirt in my video so i had to switch it up for you guys today so you know that i do actually own different clothes now i will say that i also saw some other comments on my videos and in live streams from people saying like hey man the suit looks pretty sick in your icons and in your logos and things like that and i figured you know what in the spirit of changing up my wardrobe if we can get this video to 300 likes then i will wear my suit in a video for the meme so with all that out of the way sunset canyon is a sort of like a mini game side quest type of thing that is built into rise of kingdoms it sort of focuses on the uh, open field gameplay of of rise of kingdoms but it is an auto battler type of feature so essentially what that means is you can set up your defense so you can set up your five armies something along these lines and when somebody encounters you in the sunset canyon the configuration that you set up in your defense is going to be what they fight and your troops will fight back automatically based on your configuration so you can see there's eight squares here and so i can put my armies in any of these eight squares and what's important to know is how this game mode actually works because even though it seems just like open field fighting it actually has a couple of different mechanics that make this a little bit different than just fighting in the open field if you want to read all of these specific rules you can click on the little eye here on the screen and it will show you all the different rules but the important thing to know here is number six it says only buffs from commander levels talents equipment and the vip troop capacity boost will take effect in sunset canyon challenges so what this means is if we can believe this bullet point so if this bullet point is accurate which i would like to think that it is that means that runes shouldn't actually have any effect on this gameplay using an attack buff a five percent attack buff right the item in your inventory that shouldn't have any effect on this either so there's a lot to take into consideration when you're building your armies because a lot of the game is actually stripped away in this specific game mode so it's not like you can use an army expansion and then jump into sunset canyon and plow your way through the top um it's not going to work that way so it's very limited on the type of buffs that you do get and it's really mostly about commanders versus commanders right and the equipment that is on them now another thing worth noting about sunset canyon is that your ranking will be here on the right they're measured in stars i guess and you also have sort of a battle ranking with the uh little sword icon and this will kind of give you a general idea of how strong your army compositions are compared to other players and so as you can see here avocado in first place he has a slightly higher army composition than me and for the most part i would say that this battle stat is pretty accurate if you fight somebody that is significantly higher than you you serve very little chance of winning and therefore if you fight somebody much lower than you you have a very very good chance of winning as well so this is a really great indication on if you should fight somebody or not so let's jump into fighting you click challenge right on the bottom there and then you are presented with five different players that you can attack that are uh, slightly higher than you in the rankings right and so if these aren't favorable matchups you can click refresh you can basically refresh as many times as you want um and typically what i like to do is avoid hitting players in my own alliance because that just seems counterproductive it just seems rude to knock my own alliance down the rankings but you can do whatever you want i'm sure every kingdom is a little bit different so again these are players that i can challenge in sunset canyon and when i click challenge i will go up against their pre-built defense formation like i showed you earlier but before you do that it's always important to click on on their name so you can get a drop down of all of the different commanders that they have in that defensive formation and what i like to do here is you know typically the more epics that i see here the more confident that i am that i can win because mine is mostly legendaries um, but it is important to realize that you know that's not always the case there are some very good epic commanders in sunset canyon for example uh sun Tzu and joan of arc you'll almost always see in every single sunset canyon build because they're just so good as not only epic commanders but they're very versatile in sunset canyon as well and we're going to talk 
talk a little bit about uh, some of the commanders that really shine in this game mode in just a minute but it's important to click this drop down so that way you see what the secondary commanders are because once you click challenge it's very difficult to determine what the secondary commanders are from that screen and so I like to just take a quick uh, quick note here and also if there's some commanders here that I know that I really can't beat like if I see somebody with a very powerful Constantine and an Alexander I typically know that I'm probably not gonna be able to beat that configuration just based on the commanders that I'm personally using and where they're at in their skill ups so what's important here too is that you see the levels so this uh, Kusunoki is only level 57 which means that that army is at a pretty big disadvantage because like we said most of the game is stripped away here and your level is one of the things that isn't and so having max level commanders for this is very very important um, so that's something to know going in also when I click challenge here you'll actually see the number of troops and his number of troops here is lower so now that I've clicked challenge you see my attack formation here and you see the defense formation here now the attack formation is just gonna be whatever you use last time that you attacked in Sunset Canyon uh, so don't really worry about that there's nowhere to like set an attack formation you basically just whatever you want it to be it, it, it doesn't do anything until you press okay so um, anyway you can see here that there's eight squares on both sides it's a four by two and so essentially the way that this works is that um, when you click OK, the automatic battle will commence. And the way that the battle plays out is as follows. Uh, in the top lane, for example, my Charles Martel and my Ethel Fled are going to sprint towards his Cao Cao and Genghis Khan. My Martel and Ethel Fled, since Cao Cao is in front here, these both of these armies are going to lock on to Cao Cao and he will be surrounded by both of these armies and vice versa. Cao Cao and Genghis Khan will both lock onto my Martel and my Martel will be surrounded by both of those armies and you can see that when I hit okay you'll see the surrounded logo appear on both Martel and Cao Cao you'll also see it on Sun Tzu and Kusunoki as well so the way that this works is my two armies will attack his Cao Cao if my two armies are able to defeat his Cao Cao before his two armies defeat my Martel they will proceed to then attack Khan so if both of these armies are alive once Cao Cao is dead then Khan will be surrounded by Martel and Ethelflaed assuming that Martel and Ethelflaed are able to beat both Cao Cao and Khan they will then move to the next front place nearest army which in this instance would be Kusunoki so based on the way that these are fighting Kusunoki would technically be the closest army to Martel and Ethelflaed and they will automatically switch from top row to that mid row and start attacking Kusunoki and then once Kusunoki dies they'll move to Joan of Arc and then to Sun Tzu now because this battle plays out automatically meaning you can't actually do anything once you hit okay you can't influence the battle at all you can't click and drag your troops anywhere you can't do anything so what that means is that your starting formation is incredibly important and like I said you you really can build it however you want you can have four front row and one back row or you could have you know like I did here you could have three front row two back row but what's important to know is that whoever is in front should ideally be a tanky commander so a commander that can really take damage and they can really sustain being swarmed by two armies because that is what is going to be happening here and so as you can see here I have all infantry in the front row I think that that's a pretty good strategy unfortunately for the player that I'm going up against now um, he does have a very very squishy top row and honestly I, I I almost feel like I could just leave Martel alone and he could probably take care of all of that um, weird flex Omni arc okay okay listen now since you can manually apply different buffs and a lot of the game is stripped away in this game mode it's really important to include a couple of different commanders in this build that are really going to help a lot so commanders that are um, doing support roles so player or commanders like Joan of Arc like Constantine with their support uh, with we have commanders like um, Alexander who give your nearby armies a shield those commanders are very very good in Sunset Canyon because again you can't apply buffs manually and so the only way to get buffs over your opponent are to have them built into your commanders skills now the other thing that's important in Sunset Canyon is aoe effect right so the commanders that deal aoe damage the best are going to be some of the top tier commanders in this game mode and the reason for that is because normally in the open field you can avoid aoe by simply moving your armies out of that aoe effective area and the problem with that in 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 sunset canyon is that your armies if they're if they start attacking and they're in aoe they're not going to move they're just going to take that aoe damage and so having a lot of aoe on the field is going to be a great way of spreading damage out across all of the armies and there's nothing that they can do about it they're just going to get hit 
by that aoe and so for that reason it's it's almost always that you see a sun tzu you also always see uh ethel fled with um you usually see her paired with isong but isong just in general should be there he's very very good one of the best aoe if not the best aoe commander in the game uh you also see mehmed a bit in the sunset canyon i currently have him on my um to uh, on my sun Tzu, and he's only five five one two and normally i probably wouldn't use a five five one two in the open field just given the other commanders that i have at my disposal but considering his aoe is very powerful and um he does have some skill damage buff on his second skill he has a really nice synergy with sun Tzu in the sun said canyon and so aoe commanders are very good here obviously kusunoki is one of them that i'm not personally using but he is a pretty good aoe commander you do see by bars a lot in the lower tiers as well because he does uh, deal a nice aoe damage and finally another type of commander that you see a lot more in sunset canyon than you do see in open field are leadership commanders. so in particular we're talking about uh scipio we're talking about julius caesar we're talking about frederick we're talking about even mehmed as well uh we're talking about commanders that bring more troops to the battlefield now as you can see um i do have vip 14 i recently unlocked vip 14 and so that's why my default size is a hundred thousand one hundred five thousand, whereas the other normally it would just be a hundred thousand um um, however, you'll see my Sun Tzu and my Ethel Fled both have more than 105,000. And the reason for that is my Sun Tzu has, uh, he has Mehmed as secondary and Mehmed has two skill points in his final skill, which does give him that troop capacity bonus. And Ethel Fled has some, I believe some talents in her, uh, integration tree, I believe. Uh, just kidding. She has the leadership tree. Anyway, uh, she has the, uh, fresh recruits here in her leadership tree. So that's, what's giving Ethel Fled her extra, um, troop capacity. And again, this is vital in sunset canyon and the reason for that is because uh, there is nothing that you can do to add more troops to the battlefield so when you're fighting normally in the open field you can just retreat an army and send a fresh army out to fight however in sunset canyon once you hit go they're fighting to the death and so the more troops that you can bring to the battlefield the better and that's why you see more of Scipio and Caesar and those types of commanders in this game mode than you would see normally in the open field so now that we've talked about uh the three different types of commanders that really see a lot of uh, a lot of play in this game mode let's go ahead and attack an actual player and you'll see how this plays out so usually like i said i click the drop down just to see and what i'm looking at here is what i immediately what stands out is this alexander what i want is my richard to not be up against that alexander because alexander will hinder his healing effect and it's also worth noting that you do see a ton of richard in sunset canyon because the same reason that you see leadership commanders so if you're healing your army that's giving you a sustainability that you can't normally get in sunset canyon so healing is actually very very powerful in sunset canyon whereas it's not as powerful in the open field or in garrisons god forbid uh you have a richard on your wall now let's jump into this fight so you guys can get a general idea but uh, i just wanted to make that point that richard is actually very good in this game mode for that reason healing shines like a diamond in this specific game mode so what i'm looking at here is um right now i know that my charles martel has my Joan of Arc and so I want my Joan of Arc to be relatively near the center of all of the uh the fighting going on as well as Ethel Fled and Ethel Fled because she has the half circle AoE as well as her secondary being uh Isong so that is something that I want in the center of the fighting because I think that the more the more of my armies that get buffed by Joan of Arc the better and the more of his armies that get hit by my AoE in the back row the better so that's what we're gonna do here now it's also important to know that I want to make sure that I have my infantry armies up in the front because they're gonna be tanking all right so just keep an eye out on what happens here so you're gonna see my Richard get surrounded as well as his uh, Minamoto gets surrounded now it is worth noting that when I watched this uh this replay go go off the first time um I did notice that Joan of Arc's um buff is probably going to hit all of your um all of your armies no matter where they are in the battlefield because it is a pretty big buff but still I do try to keep her near the center of the fighting now also you'll notice my Isong A has a, just a very I believe that right there is Joan of Arc's um I, the Isong A just has a huge AoE right like that's just massive it's hitting pretty much everybody except for maybe the Sun Tzu down there on the bottom um but this is kind of how the game plays out so you can see obviously we defeated the top row and now my Richard and my Minamoto have moved down to the next row beneath them which was the uh, Martel and now that Martel is done we're going down to the Ethel flood and so that was a really good performance by my uh, commanders and that's kind of how the game plays out
now let me show you guys the army breakdown that i have here so you kind of get the understanding of what i was thinking when i built these armies now i am relatively new to sunset canyon meaning i never really took this game mode seriously up until about maybe two months ago and it wasn't only until maybe one month ago that i really felt confident in uh, some of my commander pairings and if you're watching this and you love this game mode you probably have some critiques on my builds and honestly um they might they you may have a better idea of how i should be building this than me uh but i think that my build has been uh tweaked enough over time over the time uh that i've been playing this that i think it's a pretty good one for right now now often what you'll see is a richard with joan of arc and i did do that for a while however right now my richard has my alexander with him because i just think that this is a good pair now it may be the case that alexander is better as a primary for this specific game mode but um right now i just have richard as primary i just haven't gone in to test whether wh whether one is better or the other um but i think richard and alexander regardless of who's the primary i think is a really great pair for sunset canyon um that's mainly just a that is well it's really a tank and a damage dealing army because um alexander just deals crazy damage and also he gives the shield to my uh, ally armies that is weakest now martel also has joan of arc this is kind of where i put joan of arc after i removed her from richard and the reason that i didn't do martel with um with alexander is because their shields don't necessarily work perfectly well together uh, honestly it's still a great pair and you probably could get away with that um but i just decided to go ahead and put joan of arc on martel and the reason that joan of arc is on martel is because he's very tanky and that means that joan of arc is likely going to last a while on the battlefield now the only uh critique that you may want to make here is that sometimes if you put uh, joan of arc on somebody like sun tzu well sun tzu um is going to regenerate a ton of rage in this game mode and that means that Joan of Arc's buff is going to pop off over and over and over again and that may be an advantage over just keeping her sustained and alive with the tank I haven't tested to see which is better but both are strategies that you see often and both are very very good it's worth noting that Constantine is a commander that you almost always see in the top builds of Sunset Canyon I would be willing to bet that the all of the best ones use Constantine because he has the support tree and you can use that support tree to slow the the front row and that means Ethel Flood is going to to deal tons of damage with aoe uh and with esong up in that area um so you could put joan of arc with your constantine instead if you have constantine to a usable level i personally don't unfortunately which is why i'm using martel now we can talk about ethel fled but this is pretty self-explanatory we are using ethel fled primary with uh esong secondary the reason for this is because ethel fled has incredibly good aoe she has a very powerful debuff that is useful in sunset canyon she also brings a little bit more troops to the field with her leadership talents and um obviously e song is there for the massive amounts of aoe and you see the troop composition here the reason that it's mostly bowman is because of e song's second skill uh this does give you a chance of doubling your attack for three seconds if it's um it doubles the archer attack for three seconds which is very very powerful now the reason that we still have some spearmen and cavalry is because of ethel fled's third skill which says as long as you have at least three different troop types their damage is increased by 20 percent so we do try to make the best of both worlds with this build next we can move down to sun tzu we showed this before but he is paired with mehmed and again the reason for this is both deal in crazy crazy amounts of aoe um, mehmed's aoe is really really good when it's maxed out we also have the attack and uh, skill buff from the second skill on mehmed and we have the skill buff from sun tzu now we put full uh, spearman here because it's very tanky i like tankiness in um the in the sunset canyon and also you get 10 percent more health with infantry because of sun tzu so i think that's a great option now it's worth noting that um there is a time limit on these fights and so whoever has the most amount of troops at the end of a fight is going to win that fight so if you're able to kind of stall for a very long amount of time you may just win on a technicality alone but it is worth noting that very tanky armies tend to not deal that much damage so you want to have a combination of tankiness as long as, as well as some aoe and some damage dealing finally we have minamoto at the bottom this is probably my least powerful march of the bunch uh at least for uh, in terms of uh, sunset canyon and the reason for that is because literally this is just a single target dps and honestly it does perform pretty well here um i do think that genghis khan outperforms minamoto in sunset canyon and you will see a lot of genghis khan in sunset canyon because of that he just has a lower rage requirement and he can really capitalize on the fact that the fights are very short i think he deals more damage in a short amount of time than minamoto but 
I don't have a very powerful Genghis Khan. So we have a Minamoto and a Tsao Tsao. And again, this is full cavalry, obvious reasons. This is a very generic build, but again it's strictly for single target dps and um if if you know in on the attacking side this is still a very powerful march on the defensive side it can be easily taken advantage of now one thing i want to note is my builds here the way that i have these set up in a formation i mentioned earlier that you could do something along these lines and this is something that you do see but it's not very powerful and the reason for this is because all that your enemy has to do is counter whatever that front row is with the counter troop type so for example um with martel here he has nobody behind him and so what the enemy could do is just drop a their most powerful archer march right in front of him and automatically martel is at a huge disadvantage whereas if he had ethel fled behind him then now at least there's a mixture of troops hitting that uh that specific army that counters martel right and so that's the kind of the point of stacking these armies back to back you kind of make it harder for your enemy to counter because it's not just one army they have to consider but it's both the front and back army that you have to consider when going up against that target so again you, you that's something to consider now it's also worth noting why you should be doing sunset canyon because you only get seven challenge attempts every single day and you accumulate these challenge tickets once per day as long as you're completing your daily uh quests so this challenge ticket is essentially an, an additional challenge attempt and the season resets every week so these challenge tickets will be useless after the uh, that week is over so you can't stack these challenge tickets over and over and over again you can maximum get amount i guess i you can get seven of these um per week and then that's it they go away if you don't use them so it's important to use all of your challenges every single day and the reason for that is because of the rewards that you get whether you win or lose you will get rewards from sunset canyon the most uh, beneficial of them is the treasure of the warrior this is a chest that will give you a random assortment of either blueprint fragments or materials and this is i believe the only way that you can get uh golden age and some of the other things in this chest these may all be exclusive this chest i don't actually know i haven't checked but this is a great reliable way to get those blueprints so you you should be doing this regardless some of these are very good stuff of the lost is great golden age is great there's just there's good stuff in these chests so you should be getting seven of these every single day now you also get some speed ups and some experience the amount of speed ups and experience that you get per uh fight depends on whether you win or lose you get double the amount if you win but it's still worth noting that even if you lose you still get speed ups and and experience so it's still worth doing even if you end up losing uh, because you you don't don't want to waste those daily attempts with that being said guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on it so we can get to 300 that way i will wear for the meme a suit in a future video also if you made it to the end hopefully you will subscribe to the channel and click that bell i know a lot of you guys aren't actually subscribed to the channel so i would really appreciate going ahead and doing that comment down below if you have any questions about sunset canyon that i didn't answer and any strategies or things that i may have missed in this video because again i'm not a professional at this game mode um so i'm sure there are some things that i may have missed as always my social media links are in the description below make sure you drop a follow over on instagram my discord is there as well to be notified uh, so that way you're notified whenever my videos go live or when i go live on twitch follow me on twitch as well link is in the description there's also a link down there to download rise of kingdoms for your pc or mac absolutely for free it's the way that i play the game that's why you can see the cursor on the screen and it's the way that i think is the most reliable for kvk with the least amount of lag and crashing so i highly recommend trying out blue stacks again it's free link will be in the description below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the air couple talk to you guys again soon peace